I want to start off by thanking the organizers of this session because I think that Behavioral Insights has a lot to contribute to development efforts and the accomplishment of the SDGs in particular. My name is Dilip Soman. I am a professor at the University of Toronto and also the director of a research center called BEAR, Behavioral Economics in Action at Rotman. There are many projects that BEAR is currently working on that are of direct relevance to SDGs. In particular, we work in the areas of poverty reduction, uh, increasing diversity and inclusion, uh, climate change, as well as health behaviors. Now, when we think about SDGs like no poverty or, or gender equality or, or climate action, uh, they can only be achieved at the end of the day if we end up changing behaviors of several stakeholders. These could be citizens, they could be government agencies, they could be service providers, uh, or they could be businesses. There are four key points that I'd like to make when we think about how to apply behavioral insights in development efforts. First, SDGs are written to be broad and inclusive of a large family of behaviors. In fact, SDGs typically refer to outcomes that we want to accomplish. For example, no poverty. Now, in order to make that outcome happen, there needs to be several specific behavior changes that need to be engineered. For example, uh, we could say that uh, we need to change the behavior of low-income consumers. We need to get them to save more, uh, to start budgeting, to open bank accounts, uh, or to start paying down debt. But it could also be the case that we need to change the behavior of businesses. Uh, for instance, we might need to start nudging credit unions or banks to start providing appropriate loans that might replace uh, payday lending or other predatory lending practices. Or we might need to change the behavior of uh, consumer product manufacturers and retailers and get them to start offering products and services that better meet the economic life of the low-income consumer. And so in particular, it is really important to take the SDGs and decompose them into very, very specific behaviors that we're trying to change rather than trying to nudge an entire SDG. The second point I want to make relates to the notion in behavioral economics about the differences in humans versus econs. Humans are, are people like all of us here in this room. We are uh, impatient, we are you know, sometimes irrational, we don't make decisions by giving uh, every decision a lot of thought. Uh, econs, on the other hand, are, are creatures that, uh, according to Richard Taylor, uh, live on the pages of economic textbooks. They're forward-looking, they, they compute well, uh, and they are unemotional. Now, it's really important for us to try and understand the behavior of the humans whose decisions we are trying to change. Oftentimes we make erroneous assumptions about those, those humans. And in, in, in order to understand their behavior, we need to think about four specific things. Cognition, how do they make decisions? How do they think? Uh, but we also need to think about emotion. How do they feel about decision making? Their motivation, how motivated and eager are they to actually change behaviors? And finally, perception, do they see the problem in the same way as you see uh, the problem? Another key theme in the area of behavioral science is the notion of context dependence. And what that means is that behavior change or, or choices that people make in a particular context might not generalize to other contexts. And so when we think about interventions that have worked or, or nudges that have worked in certain countries or, or in certain parts of the world, uh, it is important to keep in mind that the same nudge might not work in other parts of the world because as the context changes, uh, in fact, behavior change challenges with themselves be different. Uh, critically important to examine every single intervention in the context in which that choice is made, and therefore there is absolutely no substitute for testing and retesting every single time we try and apply the same nudge. The other important theme in behavioral science is the notion of inertia and procrastination. And what this means is that in many cases, Agents, be they citizens or businesses or other entities, often know what the right thing to do is. So most people know 
that they shouldn't be polluting and most people know that they should switch off devices when they don't use them or most people know that they should save money, uh, they just don't get around to doing it. And so when we think about behavior change challenges and when you ask people to change their behavior uh, in, in a certain fashion, we often get three segments of end users. There's one segment that is motivated, they will get it done as soon as possible, they agree with the principle, uh, and that's an easy segment to deal with. There is another segment that would never do it. They're, they're you know, opposed to the behavior change for various reasons, be it philosophical, uh, be it economic. Uh, and so that's a segment that's really hard to win over. But there is often a third and surprisingly large segment. These are people who agree in principle to the behavior change challenge, but they basically will say that they'll do it tomorrow. And that's probably the best target for our behavior change interventions at the beginning. So in sum, how do we actually nudge behavior in SDGs? Well, we want to make sure that we make our processes, our touch points, human-centric, and that's critical. Make it easy for people to make the right choice and uh, communicate with them uh, in human terms as opposed to econ terms. Do the actual nudging interventions in the global south look different from the ones in the global north? Well, of course they do. Uh, and they do that because uh, the interventions are developed for every context. And so something that might work in the global north, um, for example, a electronic reminder or an, or an auto enrollment, uh, is just completely out of context in the global south. Uh, and so we need to make sure that our interventions are adjusted uh, to the context in which uh, the behavior has to be changed. But at the end of the day, the behavioral challenges are very similar. The problems we solve are very similar and the processes that we use are absolutely the same because human behavior tends to be the same across countries and across domains.